Hello again, homeowners and first time home buyers. We're gonna to talk today about the top 20 electrical red flags that you should look for in your home. And it could be a new home that you've moved into or a home that you've moved into a few years ago and you never really took notice of some of these things. They are a potential hazard. You should look out for them and some are more important than others that need to get, get rectified right away. And some of them, uh, maybe you could, you could uh, stage for a later date to have done but in, it, in any case these are all things to look for and the first thing would be what's called um, double tapped circuit breakers and what that means is is that if you've got a circuit breaker in your panel you should only have one black wire coming out of it and it's a standard outlet for a standard circuit one wire coming out to feed a circuit in some instances where people when people run out of room they will try to stick two wires in there because they want to run a new circuit, but they don't have any pa room in their panel. So they'll put two wires in there and screw down onto two wires. Now that is a red flag. You do not want to be using one breaker to handle two circuits in your house. Number two, aluminum wiring in your house. While it's common to have a home that was built between, you know, from the late 60s to the early 70s to have aluminum wiring, the real red flag is going to be if the, if you did not make it or the prior homeowner did not make that aluminum wiring safe. So you would need to pigtail them with copper. Um, you could use Alumicons to, for your pigtailing. You, but if you do uh, uh, pigtail with uh, with a, a wire nut, you need to use the uh, the grease inside that would uh, help with the conduction of electricity. Uh, there are new there's also uh, outlets and switches that are made to work uh, well together with aluminum wiring you can you can purchase and install those too so if you don't have any of those mitigation uh, techniques implemented in your home and you've got aluminum wiring then that would be a red flag that would be number two number three improperly wired outlets so for example if you have an outlet where you've got re reverse polarity and you've got the, um, the, the black wire on the silver screw and the white wire on the brass or gold screw, that's reverse polarity. That shouldn't be wired that way. You may also see where someone has put two wires on the same screw and to try to you know, jump, jump the outlet. That is a red flag as well. That is a fire waiting to happen when that thing slips off. So. Uh, that's that's a serious issue and you should be um, looking for that. If you happen to see it, you need to correct it right away. And hopefully that your, your home inspector, if you hired one, has already looked for those things. Overloaded circuits is another one where you may have too many receptacles on, this, on a particular circuit or too many devices that are drawing more power than that circuit can handle. The circuit meaning either the breaker or the wire. Okay, so uh, the, the gauge wire is going to also determine the total number of volts and amps that could run through that wire. And if you've got all these space heaters and hair dryers and other things and microwaves, things that use uh, draw too much power, that can create a, a serious hazard where you could overload and you could start a fire. Um, exposed wiring. Uh, so if you have any situation where you could see wiring from within the room, because maybe there is no outlet cover uh, or the uh, insulation on wire has been stripped too far back and you can see the exposed copper, uh, then that's an electrical hazard and that's something that needs to be taken care of. Uh, missing or damaged GFCI outlets. Um, your circuits and your kitchens and your bathrooms, any, any wet areas should have a GFCI outlet. That GFCI outlet needs to be installed as the first receptacle coming from the breaker panel because the first one will protect the other ones uh, all the way down the line. So they also have a test button so you should be testing your GFCI to make sure it works. Every once in a while test it and if it is not uh, turning off properly, it's not, it's not uh, break, breaking the circuit, then you need to replace it. It's, it's as simple as that. Um, also, so if you don't have a GFCI in the bathroom, for example, you need to install one going to prevent for a shock in case the uh, item you're plugging in happens to fall in the sink full of water. 
Okay, so uh, my list here, I've got uh, number seven is outdated electrical panels. Again, for, for older homes, the electrical panel that it really has an expiration date, it won't be printed on the, on the electrical panel, but eventually when they get too old, they become unsafe, and that's an electrical red flag to me. Um, one that, uh, that a, an electrical inspector would tell you, on a, especially on a new home, is they want arc fault circuit interrupters. They are AFCIs, there's a specific type of uh, electrical a breaker that you have in your panel, it's got a little blue button on there. And what happens is, is these things, if they sense any serious fluctuation in current or a little blip, it'll trip the breaker because it's assuming there's some kind of a hazard happening down the line in the circuit and it trips the breaker. Now, uh, another video that I'm, I don't think I did the video on it yet, but I, I will if I haven't, put together just specifically on these breakers, what the benefits are and also what the drawbacks are because there are plenty of them as well. But um, if you've got a brand new home, you're supposed to have these in there. And if you don't, then uh, then I wouldn't call it a hazard, but it's a red flag for an inspector. It was not a red flag for me. And that's one of the things that I would say put farther down the list. Uh, improper junction boxes is another one. So that's number nine. And uh, so really, what is an improper junction box? It is one where air you don't ha a you don't have one where you've got wires twisted together and spliced that are not in a covered box, so that's improper, or maybe it's inside of a box but it is uh, not covered. Uh, that's you don't have a cover on it. That's another improper box, or it's it's being contained in something that's not made for electrical circuits to be uh, joined and you know maybe it's a wooden box right so that that you wouldn't want to have um, lack of proper grounding is another one and and you've got this in older homes where maybe just the panel isn't isn't grounded properly that's the first one or you've got you don't have a ground wire in the wiring that's a huge red flag as well so those things again are, are something that happens in older homes but also in newer homes you may have a situation where uh, maybe not brand new, but a couple decades old. You may have the uh, ground wire maybe used as a neutral. I've seen that happen before. Instead, now you really have no ground. So you, each receptacle and each circuit needs to be properly grounded. Okay, flip my list. Now I've got uh, improper use of extension cords, and this can happen where uh, someone's using an extension cord instead of Romex wire. Um, using it to run something temporarily or they'll cut the plug off and splice it and now they've got that wired into an outlet or something like that that's or it's being used uh, for a circuit instead of plugging into an outlet just to run a device off of the outlet so that would be a red flag um, something that I guess in some respects is considered electrical smoke detectors Although it's not wired into your panel, uh, you do have uh, some smoke detectors that, that are low voltage uh, that do get wired in, but uh, making sure that your smoke detectors are operational, functioning, if you're working off of a battery that, that uh, you've got good batteries in there, there's a button to test it. And also, if there is an expiration date on the on the smoke detector that you make sure that if it's past its expiration then you replace it. Um, incorrect wire gauge is number 13 for me and you'll see that where you may have a, a, a 20 amp breaker in your panel and then someone's instead of using for example on a normal circuit 12 gauge wire for that they may be using a, you know 14 or or 16 gauge, which is smaller and shouldn't be carrying that kind of a load. That's just an example of having the, the wrong gauge wiring for that, for that breaker. And what you'd want to do in that situation, obviously it's going to be much more difficult to run new wire, but you want to downsize the breaker so that way you're protecting the wires and you don't have a fire inside your wall. Um, improper number, uh, oh, 14 knob and tube wiring again a very old house now knob and tube wiring 
is usually a situation where you don't even have ground. And also, the insulation on the wires is not what you find today, like that rubber. It is going to be more of a, a material, and it, it'll fray over time as well. So those things are, are going to be a red flag. And if you've got knob and tube wiring, you want to, you want to replace it right away. You just, that's got to be on your list. And if you're looking at a home that's got that, you need to take that into consideration. If you're getting an FHA loan you, uh, for your, to purchase your home, you might not pass that inspection. So you want to make sure that that's a huge deal, that that gets taken care of by the prior owner, or you budget money in there and get a quote to, to rewire everything uh, after you move in. Okay, so um, improperly installed ceiling fans or heavy light fixtures, and that really is a situation where it doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't wired properly, but you could have a, you have a, a hazard where it could come down if it's not properly supported in the ceiling. And I have a video where I show you how to hang a heavy chandelier, right? And it's the same thing with the ceiling fan. There's a bracket that goes up inside of the ceiling and attaches to the, uh, the ceiling joists on both ends and digs in there. So that way when you hang your, your, your ceiling fan or your heavy light fixture, it can support it. Because otherwise you're just gonna have your drywall trying to hold it up or maybe your your screwed or nailed into one one uh, ceiling joist or if it's the upstairs it's the, the floor floor joist on the one end and it can still dip down so that is really the hazard not so much the wiring it's more about the support for the fixture okay so um, next number 16 spliced wires without wire nuts or connectors That'll happen on occasion. Sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it has come off because it wasn't done properly. But if you see that, then, and for example, if you, you happen to be you know opening up one of your, you take the outlet cover off and you pull it out and you see that there's no, that two wires are twisted together and there's no wire nut on it, then it's a problem and you wanna then pull it all out and check all the wire nuts and, and reinstall one where needed. Um, number 17, burn marks and also some scorching marks coming out of your electrical outlets and maybe sometimes a, uh, a, uh, a light switch. And um, you'll see that it looks like burnt, you know, where you had a flash. And if, if there was been a flash there, you want to immediately inspect it and likely change that uh, that outlet or light switch right away because something has occurred in, 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 in not a good way and you want to make sure that you investigate and rewire it, put a new outlet, um, a new light switch, rewire it properly, test it, and make sure it's safe. Light switches, number 18, light switches that don't control anything. So if you've got a light switch, you're flipping it on and off and there's no, it's not turning the lights on and off okay, maybe it's controlling an outlet. So then you can, you can put your outlet tester into the outlets in the room and, and then start flipping the lights and see then if, it, if it, you get the uh, lights coming on here. If the lights are already on and the light switch is doing nothing, then I would uh, turn off the breaker for that switch and pull it out and check to make sure that everything's wired properly and if it is, then you can also replace the light switch and then see if that makes a difference. Number 19, outdated two-prong outlets. So these are older outlets that did not have the little circle hole at the bottom for, for, the, for the ground. Again, very old because those at the time, the little plugs on the things you would plug in didn't have the ground position. So therefore, the outlets only had two. So especially if you want to be plugging in a lot of modern fixtures today, you're going to need to have a traditional up-to-date to code outlet. And if you've got two prong outlets, just change them right away. As soon as you see them in your house or you're moving in, just get it done. Finally, number 20, improperly installed DIY wiring. And some of the things that you would see with DIY improperly installed wiring are some of the things that I may have mentioned already. And, and some of the things that I haven't yet, which I'll review in some other, in other videos, like how to you know, wire an electrical outlet or a light switch where 
you may put the uh, J hook going the wrong direction. Instead of it going uh, clockwise, you've got it going counterclockwise. Different things like that, that would be uh, a tip that says this thing wasn't done properly. Even if you see a uh, not so, sometimes it gets, it gets dismissed when you see it, which is you've got the uh, plate cover over your outlet and the outlet maybe is recessed back and you can see a big gap in there. That's a red flag to me too. And that, you know, there, there's ways to handle that. Again, I'll cover that in another video, but all these little things are tips to me that somebody has done their own wiring and that's fine. I've done my own wiring for years and years and I'm not a licensed electrician, but when you're, it tells me that someone maybe didn't know what they were doing and it needs to be investigated. So those are the top 20. You have any others for me? Uh, definitely let me know. And also, if you found any of this to be interesting or helpful, please give me that thumbs up. I do appreciate you. And thank you for watching. You can suggest other videos for me to make. Appreciate you every day. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon.